Our last story tonight comes from Djibouti, a tiny country in East Africa. It is home to just over a million people and they are at war with mosquitoes. They are witnessing an unprecedented surge in malaria cases. And malaria, as you would know, can be a deadly disease. It kills at least 600,000 people every year the world over. And it is spread by mosquitoes. Now, Djibouti has been grappling with this disease for decades. In 2012, it was on the verge of eliminate, eliminating malaria. At least that was the hope. But cut to today and the cases have only skyrocketed. More than 70,000 cases were recorded in 2020. That's roughly one in 15 people. It's a dramatic rise. And Djibouti has tried to fight it. But this nation is up against a mosquito super species. These insects thrive in urban areas. They bite both during the day and night. They have outsmarted most methods of control. They're resistant to chemical in insecticides. Fighting them has been a costly and complicated endeavor, yet Djibouti has been on the losing end of this war. So now they're bringing out the big guns, or shall I say, tiny buzzing guns. I'm talking about mosquitoes. Djibouti is using mosquitoes to fight mosquitoes. But here's the twist. They're using bioengineered mosquitoes. In other words, genetically modified mosquitoes. They come with a self-limiting gene. Let me explain how this works. Only female mosquitoes bite. They cause malaria. They transmit malaria and other viral diseases. So Djibouti has taken male mosquitoes and tweaked their genes. Recently, tens of thousands of these mosquitoes were released into the wild, where they will mate with females and introduce a gene in female offspring, a gene that will not let them survive into adulthood. It would reduce the population of mosquitoes. In short, Djibouti has released mosquitoes that are genetically engineered to kill their own children. Now, this is a first in East Africa and only the second case in the continent. Burkina Faso used this technique in 2019. Now, other African nations like Uganda are also keen and it makes sense for them. Africa bears the brunt of the global malaria burden. It accounts for 96% of malaria deaths worldwide. These countries want to fight the disease. They want a solution that is permanent, that does not require continuous investment. And genetic modification promises just that. Plus, it proposes equality. Once the mosquitoes are released, they can, they can benefit everyone equally, regardless of income levels, which is not the case with bed nets or vaccines or insecticides. And African nations are not the only ones exploring such solutions. Similar technology has been used in Brazil, the Cayman Islands, Panama, and India. Since 2019, more than one billion such mosquitoes have been released the world over. But here's the catch. Genetic modification is controversial. Most governments are hesitant and people are scared. And you're going to risk our community. You're going to ask the people in our community to be sacrificial lambs. Really, that's the whole point of the, of the experiment, is to take a for-profit company and give them a means to run a test that, hey, they make money on technically. This technology could be life-saving, but its risks are still unknown. The technique is in its early stages. There are few laws to regulate it. Mosquitoes can cross boundaries. Who will stop them at national borders? What if mosquitoes are released inadvertently? What if modification changes their behavior? What if they build resistance to lethal genes? What if someone uses this technology to create bioweapons? Who controls all of this? More importantly, even if this entire process can be regulated, how should it happen? What level of oversight is required? It could be necessary but it could also stifle innovation. So how much is too much and how safe is safe enough? Lots of questions. And history is filled with stories of pest control gone wrong. You can fantasize about every possible fate in a laboratory. You can hope that meddling in genetic code will save lives. But what about the catastrophic consequences that no one anticipates? Essentially, this is a Jurassic Park question, and we all know how that turned out. South Africa's May 29th elections. There was a start of change in the country. We are on the bench of history. 
I am standing here at the forefront of change where voices echo the call for action. The nation grapples with an unemployment crisis. As South Africans prepare to cast their votes, the question looms, will the winds of change usher in a new era or will the legacy of the past maintain its grip on the future?